Um, you know, I, I have a question to begin. Just a simple question, but one that I really feel and want to ask each of you, how are you? That's what I want to ask tonight. How are you? Really, how are you? <clears throat> I know we ask that of each other uh, frequently. We get that question a lot. But you know, I really care. And I believe that you guys care how I am. And I believe that God really cares <clears throat> about how you are and what you're feeling. I feel like I have a little frog in my throat. So bear with me. <clears throat> I wanna ask, what have you been carrying daily that's been heavy for you? You know, um, there are so many things that can weigh our hearts down in just one day. It could be something with your job, or maybe you need a job and you don't have one right now because you lost your job. Um, maybe you're concerned about someone in your family who's been hurting. Or like me, the mother of four, maybe you're just concerned about one of your children and you know, you just, your heart's heavy because of that. Um, maybe you, like many in this call, have lost a loved one this year. It's amazing how many people we have lost. And I know in our family, um, we lost Jimmy's oldest brother's wife died that many of you met when she was here a year ago. We lost her in July. And that was really heavy. And it, it seemed to happen really quickly. And that was hard. Carrying grief is a, is a heavy burden. And um, especially during this time um, in COVID and, and just as we've had less time together in person where we can look at each other and touch one another and hug and cry together, laugh together, all the things that we miss doing, grief, I think, can be heavier. So, you know, maybe that's what you're feeling a lot and, and battling through and persevering through. Maybe like many during 2020, you have faced loneliness. You know, like just missing friends, missing family that you haven't been able to see that you usually are able to go see and visit. You know, you just miss. Um, it's hard. It's hard, especially if you live far away and you really, your, your hearts are just heavy because you miss so much. And if you're like me, you feel all kinds of emotions each day, filled with anxiety uh, or pressure to be all that you want to be for those that you love. Can you relate to that? You know, you just, these are the things that maybe you're carrying in some way. Well, tonight we're gonna talk about an aspect of Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit that I believe we are in all great need of, especially as na now as much as ever. We're gonna focus on the comfort that God desires to show us. And he gives us through Jesus and that he surrounds us with through his Holy Spirit. I believe that we need extra doses of God's comfort in our everyday lives right now. I feel that very strongly. We're gonna focus on, um, you know, the comfort that, that God desires to show us. Um, and I wanna begin with the definition of the word comfort. I know, I know you know what it is, but it's always good to get a definition and to really focus on that definition and think about it. So I'm gonna give you a few. One is to give strength and hope to, to ease the grief or trouble of, to console or greatly strengthen. 
to lessen the sadness or sorrow of someone. Comfort is to make grief seem lighter by means of kindness and thoughtful attention. One of the most touching ways that God shows us his love is through comforting us. And in Isaiah chapter 40, we're gonna read, I love the whole chapter of Isaiah 40, but we're gonna just read a, a little bit of it. <clears throat> in verse one, it says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. And in verse 11, it says, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. I love this imagery of God. And as I've shared uh, in recently, I just studied out the book of Isaiah and it's amazing. There's so much imagery of God in his heart and how he feels about us and how he wants to comfort us. And I just love this, this passage that, you know, God longs to comfort his people and we need it. We need comforting from God every day. I don't even think we're always aware of how much we need it because we just plug through. You know, we just push through in life and we don't stop long enough to really feel what we're feeling and realize how much we need to draw near to God and let him comfort us. He longs to comfort us. He is so tender and adoring of us. You know, I love it that he says he carries the lambs close to his heart. And those of us who have pets, um, you know, that feeling of just comforting, hugging a pet or a child. We're going to talk more about that one. But it's, it's really special, that feeling that we get. Well, God longs to comfort us. He doesn't look at us and say, suck it up. Stop your crying. Stop feeling all these things. No, God desires to be there for us in the most tender of ways. And uh, I love the class that Ashley did on Jesus as our shepherd. And this is just another passage, uh, like we read a lot in Psalm 23 uh, and the Gospel of John. But, you know, this is another one, this shepherd, this tender, loving shepherd that God is to us. He desires to be there for us in the most tender of ways. And he wants, the other thing is he wants to constantly be there with us, his presence. He wants us to feel his presence always, not haphazardly or randomly. God is, wants to be with us. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. He wants us to feel that. In Isaiah 66, I'm going to read in verse 11 through 13. This is another uh, one of the most powerful imageries of God and his love. It says, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and bounced on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted. You know, I love this imagery of God being like a mother with a little child, because that's what God feels about us. And you know, right now in my life, I'm pretty much surrounded by babies a lot with our family where um, every one of our kids has a baby. And my uh, youngest daughter's little Adelaide turned one this month. 
So last Friday, Julia had to take her to her first year pediatric appointment and she had to get four vaccinations and they were pretty, it, it wasn't easy. And Addie was screaming and crying and so distraught. And I hate that to see little babies. They have no clue. Why are you hurting me? They just look at you with this horrified face. Those of us who've experienced that and yet the thing that they tell mothers to do is to hold them in their arms and nurse them if they are nursing babies or you can give them a bottle. But uh, if they're tiny like that, nursing them will comfort them and help them. And that's what Julia did. And that's what helped Addie to be comforted. That's how she consoled her. You know, that's what, what God wants to do for us, you know, God wants to comfort us like a mother does her little baby. And, you know, that's one of the most tender visuals that we can get. Uh, that's how God feels about you. He wants to hold you. You know, God wants you to feel his love and his attention just like a mother gives to her little baby, adoring, bouncing her on your knee, you know, whatever we've all, if you've held a baby, you know, you do anything and everything to console them, to help them if they're hurting or if they're sad or, you know, sometimes you don't know what's, what's wrong. And that's kind of like us. Don't we feel that way sometimes? Just like a crying baby. You know, we're, we're crying. We really don't know what is wrong. We are just unhappy. Sometimes we don't even realize maybe we need some sleep. Maybe we need some food. Maybe we need, you know, but a mother is so attentive to her child that she will figure it out. What does this baby need? You know, God is that way with you. God wants to figure out and help you know what, it, what you need. And he wants to comfort you. He longs to comfort you just like a mother does her baby. And that's so such a powerful visual. But we have to let him. We have to stop and we have to let him comfort us. We have to realize, you know, I need God right now. I need to sit in God's lap. I need to let him hold me. I need to let him comfort me. I need to let him quiet my anxious heart, my crazy thoughts, my doubts, my fears, my burdens, all of it. I need to let him hold me and listen to me as I pray and as I give him my burdens. He says, cast them on him. God, that is what is gonna comfort us more than anything. When I pray, and I cried, sometimes I just cry to God and I get out everything that I'm feeling. And you know, God is the best listener. He listens to it all. He doesn't interrupt. He wants to hear everything that you feel and think, all your worries, all your cares, all your troubles. But we have to let him, we have to sit still long enough to let him know what we're feeling. And we need to let him hold us and quiet us. There's so much more I could share about right now in, with God. These are only just two passages in the Old Testament. There's so many. I've studied out comfort throughout the Bible. I looked at all the passages and it's unbelievable. How, how much God longs to comfort us. I think the biggest thing that we've got to realize is we have to let him. We have to take the time to let him. I want us now, we're going to look in John 11 because we're going to move into God's heart as he sent Jesus to us. And Jesus is what we're going to focus on right now in John 11. We're, many of us, you're probably familiar with this chapter. It's on Lazarus and Mary and Martha. One of Jesus's, uh, a family that Jesus was so close to, uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, were in crisis. 
because Lazarus was very, very sick. And one of the girls, one of his sisters sent word to Jesus that her brother Lazarus was very sick, please come. So they were urgent, you know, like we, we get, we, we worry, we, we're concerned and they knew how much Jesus loved them and they knew Jesus could help. Well, unfortunately, Jesus arrives four days later and Lazarus has already died and is in the tomb. And Mary and Martha are heartbroken, as you, we've all, we know that feeling if we've been through it, and they're very emotionally distraught. And I want to read, well, so Martha goes to Jesus first, Mary, and he's outside of the village where they live. And she goes to him and just says, Lord, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. You know, she know, I know that you, I mean, she was just, she was just bearing her heart. And then later he goes, he, he, Mary comes to see Jesus outside of the village and some of the family and friends follow her to go see Jesus. So that's what we're going to read about in verse 32 in chapter 11, it says, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? She asked, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. You know, it's this whole account, uh, I want to encourage you to read John 11, just to read it all. Um, it's a long, it's a fairly long chapter, but you know, here Jesus, he is knowing that God is going to uh, perform this miracle to bring Lazarus back to life. He knows that. He knows that this is for God's glory. And this is also Jesus stepping out in this way to perform this miracle. He realizes that's going to expedite everything for his life and his death, his imminent death on the cross. And that's exactly what happens after this. You'll read about it. But, you know, Jesus knows all of this. He knows that the good news that he's going to call Lazarus out of the tomb and he's going to take off the grave clothes. Can you, I, I mean, it's unbelievable to try to imagine this whole situation. And yet I always ask myself, you know, if Jesus knew all this, why did Jesus weep? He knows he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knows, guys, stop crying. Trust me. He, I mean, he could have logically tried to help them. Don't worry. I got this. My God has this. You know, I mean, I, I try to imagine the way I would be. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been like Jesus. But Jesus shared in their suffering and in their pain. He stepped into their world. He stopped. He offered his presence and he felt the pain and the suffering that they were going through. And he wept with them. He wept. He felt so much compassion, so much love, so much concern that he wept. You know, he realized the privilege and the honor it was to even be a part of this family's mo when when we when loved ones are born into our lives, it's a sacred moment. And when loved ones pass and die, it's a sacred moment. And it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of those times in someone's life. And Jesus he offered himself. He didn't do a lot of talking other than, you know, if you read the whole account, but once he was a part of their grief and their pain and their loss, he cried with them. That's what he did. That was his comfort 
to he offered himself. He offered himself, his heart. And Mary and Martha felt his love. And that was so important. That was God's love being expressed. You know, that was God's love through Jesus crying. He didn't have to do that. He, he knew the whole story, unlike Mary and Martha did. But he, he chose to mourn with them and to comfort them with his tears. Like I said earlier, you know, this, of course, led then to Jesus having to, he had to withdraw to lonely places with his disciples from that point on because they were, everything was set in motion for him to be crucified. And so, um, of course, in John 13, Jesus washed the, washes the disciples' feet. He's comforting them, loving them, showing them the full extent of his love. And I want to read in John 14, um, just this passage is what Jesus gave to his disciples, shared with them, and he shares with each one of us. And I believe it's one of the most comforting things that we need to cling to every day. We need to think about this, especially when we're going through hard times, when we're feeling it, when we're feeling life. Jesus says in verse one, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know, that's, that's so comforting to know that Jesus, that we can trust God, we can trust him, that they're preparing a place for us and that God's house has many rooms. This world is not our home. Um, this life is not what we're living for today, right now. We're living for eternity with God. You know, we're living to be with God. No more tears, no more death, no more dying. Uh, God wants us to be in heaven with him. And, you know, God adores us. God loves us. God can't wait for us to come home. And Jesus feels the same way. He wants to comfort us with that. And I, I want to encourage you to, to really put this, these scriptures on your heart, to think about them, to meditate on what Jesus is saying here. <laughs> I know there's so much we don't know about our future eternally, but I do know that we can put our hope in these words that Jesus gave us. And we can be comforted every day by these words, just like Jesus was striving to comfort his disciples at this time. He wants to comfort us. And lastly, I just want to close out in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <laughs> You know, God, of course, uh, we've looked at his comfort, the way he comforts us. We, of course, know that Jesus comforts us and wants to and desires to. And he also blesses us with the ability to comfort one another. And what a special privilege that is. Let's read this together in verse three. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ, our comfort overflows. And wow, what a privilege it is to know that God's comfort 
that the comfort of Jesus fl flows into us and then wants to flow out of us to one another. God wants us to feel comforted. He wants to comfort us. And he uses each one of us to comfort each other and to comfort others in this world who are hurting. We are God's hands and hearts and whatever to comfort one another. You know, God uses you. God uses you to comfort others. And his Holy Spirit works in your heart to comfort, not only to comfort you, but to comfort others. And whatever you've gone through in this life, whatever loss you've faced, whatever trials you've gone through, and I know there are many, each one of us, what we've been through in our lives, we're able to comfort and reassure each other because of the comfort that God has given us. God got us through it. God helped us. God carried us. God listened. God was faithful. On our darkest, worst day and hour, God was there. His presence was with us and he helped us. And we can give that same assurance to one another and encouragement. So at this time, <clears throat> I'm going to pray and then we're going to break up into groups.